Hi there. In this talk, I'll present some results and methodological considerations on the annotation and prediction of motion arcs of movies. This is joint work with my students, Frauke and Anastasia. I've been working on this project for a few years as part of a digital humanities course. The idea of reducing stories to their emotional shape goes back to a rejected master thesis proposal by Kurt Vonnegut. His idea was that if we graph the shapes of stories, we end up uh, with six universal story shapes. <clears throat> with on the y-axis, good and ill fortune, on a, and on the x-axis, uh, time from beginning to end. This idea appealed to digital humanists, and around uh, 2015, uh, several people successfully implemented this idea. So Matthew Jockers and Reagan et al. published about this idea, and they used sentiment analysis to uh, measure the sentiment in literature over time, and then used uh, mathematical algorithms to reduce the, the raw signal from this to supposedly universal plot shapes. Zooming in on the singular value decomposition as one possible way of uh, identifying universal plot shapes, the singular value de decomposition uh, factorizes the signal into several components. Uh, and as you can see in the bottom, um, we get shapes similar to the six universal plot shapes suggested by Kurt Vonnegut. And um, to, a <coughs> to a more or lesser extent, uh, the, the, the books used as input fit these, um, uh, fit these patterns. However, this, uh, this work has also been criticized. Uh, in an interesting blog post, um, uh, it was shown by Scott Enderley that if we use random data as input, we can also get the same uh, uh, supposedly universal uh, plot shapes uh, as a result. Uh, as a matter of fact, the increasing number of peaks, so uh, having a one peak uh, or a two peaks and a valley, etc., there are just uh, <coughs> a universal pattern of sine waves, which is always going to be the output of the uh, SVD algorithm. So, yeah, this shows that there's uh, actually a problem with this assumption of universal plot shapes. It might be that it's actually because we are forcing the algorithm uh, to produce these universal plot shapes, that uh, these are the results that we are getting. So in this work, um, uh, although I will try to appro approximate the emotion arcs of stories, I won't try to identify so-called universal plot shapes. I won't uh, apply algorithms that force the, the signal to be um, clustered into one of these in universal plot shapes. My goal is to evaluate the suitability of sentiment analysis for narrative text in general, and to compare different sentiment analysis methods, and also to try to improve the methodology for this. As data, instead of literature, I will use movies. Uh, one of the advantages of movies is that movie subtitles have exact timestamps. So uh, when we make annotations and we uh, perform our sentiment analysis, uh, it's easy to exactly align these annotations and the sentiment analysis from the exact timestamps in the movies. The annotations uh, are based on uh, annotating the sentiment uh, per minute on a five-point scale. And by sentiment here, we do not mean uh, whether the person watching the movie enjoys the movie or not, but similar to what Kurt Vonnegut um, um, meant by his good or ill fortune axis describes uh, what is happening in the story, if the things are going well or not. And I use a five-point scale uh, so as to have uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> so as to have a, suffi a sufficient amount of uh, detail and to be able to distinguish um, uh, negative and slightly negative uh, events in the, in the movie. And as you can see here, yeah, we have an example of subtitles on the top right, and on the, uh, the bottom right, we have uh, examples of annotations for the same 
same timestamps in the in the same movie. Well, um, the emotion arcs are then based either on the annotated sentiment or on approximated sentiment based on sentiment analysis of the subtitles. I will use two different sentiment uh, analysis methods, namely the traditional uh, lexicon-based sentiment analysis, which is just a dictionary of, of positive and negative terms, and uh, for each subtitle it simply counts the number of negative and positive words. Then I also um, evaluate a more advanced model based on large language models, namely a model uh, fine-tuned on m movie uh, reviews. Um, on uh, sentences from movie reviews. Well, if we just take the raw signal of the sentiment or the annotations, well, we don't, do not get smooth em uh, emotion arcs. So therefore, uh, we also apply smoothing. Uh, the simplest approach, which I applied in previous work, is to take a moving average over the signal. However, the downside of this is that this gives an equal amount of weight to all of the data points in your um, moving window. Um, an, a more sophisticated approach with I which I use in this work is called LOS, which stands for locally weighted scatter plot smoothing. And given a parameter of how many, uh, what fraction of data points you want to take into account for the window, um, it gives the most weight to the closest data points and gives increasingly less weight to data points farther away, up until uh, the bandwidth of the window. Um, so there's this parameter which we can choose uh, uh, um, for, for how large this window is, and I set it to uh, 10%. So 10% of the close, closest data points are used to smooth each point of the, of the emotion arc. If you increase this value, you get much smoother curves um, but yeah, uh, to be able to have an interesting amount of detail, um, I settled on 10% of the uh, data points. Okay, um, then to facilitate comparison, um, uh, we would like to have, uh, if, if when we're comparing, when we're comparing uh, curves from different methods or when we're comparing sentiment analysis with annotations, we would like to have the peaks and valleys to have, to have uh, approximately equal size. Uh, we do this by scaling the, the emotion arcs to unit variance so that uh, roughly the peaks and the valleys uh, are, the, uh, are of the same height. Note that we do not apply uh, z-scoring, which is applied by some, some other um, work on emotion arcs. Uh, the reason for that is that z-scoring also uh, includes normalizing uh, the mean so that uh, <coughs> the, the, the mean of the emotion arc is set to zero. Uh, however, the reason to avoid this is that this could turn a positive score into a negative score and vice versa. So uh, by only scaling the variance, um, we retain uh, the all of the positive scores in the original uh, also all show up as positive scores um, in the resulting uh, emotion arc. Okay, let's look at the first set of annotations. Um, compared to previous work, um, uh, I have decided to use a five-point scale for annotation and to see what the effect of this is. Here we see a comparison of annotating the same movie with um, a three-point scale, so negative, neutral, and positive, and a five-point scale, so negative, slightly negative, neutral, etc. And as you can see, um, the annotation with the three-point scale has much more pronounced uh, valleys and peaks, um, and uh, the, the, <coughs> the emotion arc with the five-point scale uh, looks to be uh, more smooth and uh, captures uh, more of the, the, the nuances of the plot. So it seems that it's good, a good idea to annotate with this more fine-grained five-point scale. Okay, to see whether the um, annotation task uh, is a feasible task for the annotators, 
I also here show the results of two different annotators annotating the same movie, both with the five-point scale. And as you can see here, the curves uh, agree with each other quite closely in most of the cases, um, except for uh, um, a, a, the, the peak here in blue, which is not uh, part of the, the, of, the, of the red emotion arc. But overall, the, the curves f follow each other quite closely. So I conclude from this that there's quite a, a, a high amount of annotator agreement. Then, in this uh, plot, we see a comparison of um, a manually annotated sentiment of a movie and two times of predicted sentiment based on subtitles. Uh, the first is with regular subtitles, which inc include only dialogue, so this is without CC. And the other is uh, with closed captions. So these closed captions des describe uh, some of the um, some of the things uh, which are not expressed in dialogue, um, which are for uh, intended for um, people who are uh, have difficulty uh, hearing. So, for example, Carl laughing or Carl groans is part of the closed captions subtitles, and you can see here uh, that uh, there's a considerably higher number of subtitles if we include these co closed captions, about 150. And this provides, provides more detail, which is also picked up by the sentiment analysis. So if we com compare the, the blue curve, which is with closed captions, to the light red one, we see that uh, in the first half of the movie, there's uh, some, uh, there are some uh, valleys which are more closely uh, predicted if we use the closed captions. And also on the second half of the movie, we see that the annotated sentiment and the predicted sentiment is much more accurate if we use the closed captions. So from here on out, uh, we try to always use the, the closed captions uh, rather than the regular subtitles. Then um, we also wanted to see if the neural sentiment analysis based on large language models provides a much more uh, accurate sentiment arc. Um, compared to the lexicon-based sentiment analysis. And you can see that here, the blue curve has, um, is based on neural sentiment analysis, whereas the light red curve is based on uh, lexicon-based sentiment analysis. And we can uh, see that the blue curve picks up on much more of the valleys and neg negativity in the first half of the, of the movie, and also um, matches the the curve on the second half of the movie much more closely. So uh, again, for the rest of the analysis in this presentation, I will use the neural-based sentiment analysis. Okay, so for this movie up, the, the predicted emotion arc works quite well, but I, al I also noticed that for some other movies, it doesn't work as well. So for example, if we take an action movie, here are the Guardians of the Galaxy, we see that there are um, very high peaks, which are uh, almost not detected by the sentiment analysis. And well, this can be explained by the fact that uh, if there are, for example, uh, battle scenes, um, there might not be as much dialogue, and there just not so not uh, the input for the sentiment analysis doesn't provide enough information. So this is clearly a limitation of the of the method. Um, other interesting limitations uh, f for the sentiment analysis occur when we look more closely at the kind of mistakes it makes. And an example is here from the movie The Joker, um, where there's a scene in a bus where the Joker starts laughing uncontrollably uh, and, mani and maniacally. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the people around him uh, start getting annoyed. And this is actually um, a kind of a disturbing, sad scene but the laughter is misidentified as positive by the sentiment analysis, which mismatches the situation in the movie. Okay, um, lastly, let's see an application where we just take some subtitles of movies for which we uh, do not use the annotations, but only look at the emotion arcs 
produced by the sentiment analysis. And um, this is based on the idea I uh, um, shown in previous work that Disney movies follow a kind of uh, formula where they, um, uh, um, well, there is a pattern where they, they always end with a very happy ending uh, and just before there's a valley of uh, negativity. Well, uh, if we look at the Pixar movies, uh, these are three Pixar movies, we can see that they're uh, remarkably uh, similar to each other. The, the, the emotion arcs follow each other quite closely um, and they follow a si similar formula of a strong happy ending just after a deep valley. Uh, although I should say the ending of uh, Ratatouille here on the left-hand side uh, is a happy ending, but the sentiment analysis uh, didn't correctly identify it. But other than that, the, the curves uh, are remarkably similar to each other. Especially on uh, the right, uh, they follow each other very closely with these, uh, with these uh, two peaks uh, in the end and the deep valley uh, on the end. Okay, uh, what kind of takeaway do we have here? Predicting a movie's uh, emotion arcs from subtitles is a hard task um, because yeah, the aggregate, aggregate sentiment does not necessarily reflect the overall sentiment of the scene. Uh, moreover, not all of the sentiment is reflected in the text and the dialogue. There's a, a context to the movie. There are other modalities which might be important and it's hard to uh, capture this by a sentiment analysis tool. Well, we found that it's helpful to use uh, closed caption subtitles and it's helpful to make um, a more fine-grained sentiment an annotation with at least uh, five uh, labels. Um, and the, the low S smoothing uh, uh, seems to be a good smoothing method because it applies more weights to the more closer data points. In future work, it would be interesting to, uh, to identify uh, appropriate evaluation metrics, um, uh, yeah, which can uh, automate the process of evaluating whether the, uh, the curves match with the annotations, because otherwise, uh, um, yeah, there, <coughs> um, because otherwise there is a risk of confirmation bias where we. Um, look for what we like to see and ignore uh, the rest of the curves which, which don't match and because judging these emotion arcs is quite a subjective task. However, uh, devising a good evaluation metric is complicated because as Vonnegut claimed, it's about the overall shape of the emotion arc and not so much about the precise difference in amplitude which we uh, might find. It would also be interesting to apply more sophisticated uh, machine learning methods uh, because if we collect enough annotations, we might be able to uh, fine tune a machine learning model uh, on the annotations of the movies to be able to uh, train the, the model on specific uh, properties of the, of the subtitles and of different movie genres. Okay, that's all. <laughs>